Hello, I'm Rick. We're here at Fort 96 uh, for a uh, celebration of a period. Um, the period that I am uh, in currently doing is the uh, Revolutionary War. Now, I happen to be a member of a unit called the East Florida Rangers. Now, we dressed as frontiersmen up until 1777 in Augusta when we were enfolded into the Army, and we were given our first uniform. So let's talk about this uniform. First thing is the shoes. In my case, being a ranger, I get to wear moccasins. Usually they would have to wear boots or they would have to wear the buckle shoes that was so prevalent at the time. We are then issued gaiters. These are called gaiters. Now what they are basically is they're kind of like leggings. They're to protect our legs as we go through the brush. Now underneath these leggings are socks or stockings. Okay. We have a short pair of pants or breeches. They can be white when they're in the regular military. Ours are brown because we travel through the woods, through the wooded areas. Now since we were issued the uniform, we were issued the uniform of a light infantry. Now a light infantry uniform was green in color with red uh, collars and sleeves and epaulets. You notice on my one epaulet I have a green patch. Well, that green patch notifies that I am a corporal in the, in the East Florida Rangers, or a corporal in the Light Infantry. My hat is made so that it will cover my eyes so that I can see well. Uh, the, some of the Light Infantry would wear what people seem, uh, what people understand is the Rogers Rangers hat, which is the front is flipped up and it's got no brim on it. Uh, that would be a light infantry type of hat that you would wear. I wear a standard common white shirt underneath. My stock is of uh, silk. It's much more comfortable than the leather. Again, because we run through the woods. Uh, on my About my waist, I have my equipment that I need to have. I have my bayonet for my brown vest. It's great for skewering meat and cooking it over a fire as well. Hatchet for making camp or fighting if necessary. Usually I carry a knife, a rather large knife, again for self-defense, but also for camp qualities. My cartridges are carried in a belly pouch, and the reason they're carried in this type of pouch as opposed to the shoulder pouch is as I run through the woods, I don't have something flapping against me. You notice that I do have a pouch. In this pouch I have extra flints, my cleaning equipment, extra round balls and patches in case I run out of powder. A lot of times we would carry also a uh, powder horn, just in case. Uh, I have on that a couple of tools that are absolutely necessary when you shoot a flintlock. You have a prick, which is what this does is this cleans out the flash hole in the, in the lock so that your gun will hopefully go off every time. And you have a whisk to brush off any kind of residue that's in there. You may also carry what's called a napping hammer. It's a small brass hammer, and you use that to resharpen your flint if you need to. So uh, the musket is like the standard musket. It is shortened. The furniture is darkened so that I can so that I can conceal myself in the woods and it's not going to shine and give away my position. You notice that it's very robust. A very large lock. Very large flint. Very large bore. 75 caliber. The reason for that is it's a military arm. It's made to fight with. It throws about a little bit over a one and an eighth ounce lead ball. It's like shooting a 12 gauge shotgun. And you do that every single time. It's not as accurate as a rifle. There are times when rangers do carry rifles. If we're on a scout and we're looking long distances and watching, we may want to be able to keep people away from us. This range of this is 50 to 80 yards. I would prefer much, much less to have them any closer than that, but then that's why the bayonet. So if I carry a rifle, my idea is to keep them far enough away from me that I can get away. Rangers or light infantry not only walk on foot and scout, but they also scout on horseback. There go the shorter barrel. It's easier to handle and easier to, to carry. You notice on my hat, I have a feather. The feather indicates that I'm a marksman and a rifleman. You notice also the white cockade. That is a mark of the East Florida Ranger, and that's what shows who I'm with. Now, the prob one of the problems was is the American infantry, the light infantry, wore the same uniform that you see here, 
So sometimes in battle, it got a little difficult to tell who was who. So your hat would tell. If you wore a hat like this, a wider brimmed hat, and the side was flipped up, the reason the side was flipped up is if by chance you had to march, you could put your rifle on your shoulder. Needless to say, if you tried to do that on this side, you'd have a little problem. Okay. You notice it also has a sling, a sling so that we can sling it across our back when we're riding or when we're walking. And that is pretty much the uniform of a light infantry or an East Florida Ranger. Thank you.